Okay, so now we're outside. <clears throat> and these Mobius get really hot, so if they're on for 10 or 20 minutes, they are potentially melting a bit inside. Okay, let's try this out. Hopefully this will work. I'm gonna go inside and load up some new new pits maybe. But it looks like the other frame had an inherent wobble to it. So maybe there is a break in the other frame because personally I can't see a big problem with this. And that's a 3010C battery folks. And watch this. I guess you can't watch that, but... Now, for fast descents, I found that air mode is really, really helpful. So if I throw it into air mode, I know it because it's a beeping noise. See that? No wobble. Very impressed with that, Boris. Not sure if that's why you did it, but... Now shut off air mode. It hasn't fallen out of the sky yet, see? Good response. Let's go into acro. Acro. Oh, oh. Watch out, there's jets in the sky. Big fat contrails. At 15,000 feet for some reason. But anyways, there's the antennas, you can see them. Now we're in acro. Let's go up. Watch this, here we go. It's a little dynamite quad, that's for sure. No crash yet, folks. Not in air mode, see? Now if I drop it, hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'll take it up to that height and drop it. And see if it wobbles. See how bad it comes down? Let's switch on air mode. Okay, let's take it up in air mode. Okay, now I'm going to drop it. No throttle. And because it's got a little bit of power when it's in aero, uh, air mode, it's definitely not going to flutter as much because it's not stopping the props and creating a huge amount of wobble. So it's excellent for fast ascents. And that could be used in all kinds of circumstances, like search and rescue and all kinds of things like that. Looking beyond the acro thing. It's a bit of a fad now, but 10,000 or a 10C battery, folks, 3,000 ma. A 2700 zippy weighs 245 grams. This is a three cell 2700 zippy at 40C. A 10C multi star at 4,000 ma weighs 250 grams, five grams more. So you could definitely fly longer with a 4,000 mAh battery. This 3,000 will last quite a while, almost 10 or 12 minutes. Oh, everybody's looking at the flowers today. And it still punches out nicely. Air mode, control descent. There we go. Out of air mode. Now, if you land in air mode, it's not going to like you at all. Here's the landing in air mode. Very similar to the old Barome uh, Barrow altitude hold on NASA, I think, as well as on the. Uh, free flight board which the Naze 32 was based on so you have it bouncing around when it's in barrow mode altitude hold because it's trying to find compensate for the uh, change in barometric pressure and on the ground barometric pressure can change quite drastically so I think air mode definitely I know it doesn't include the barrow I don't think it does maybe it does it it might actually use the barrow and that's why you have that bouncing when it comes down to the ground 
Now, I trust this quad now. It's been flying for quite a while. You can do a little bit of aggressive moves. Almost ditched it there. So, it's not reacting the same way. It's not cutting out. So we're gonna have to try the other board in another quad. But for now, I think we're gonna fly this one. Motors are sounding really, really nice. Look at your the, the nuts on the motors, and you'll be able to see vibration or wobbling. If one of the motors is extremely bent, you will definitely see it moving. Your other option is to get a camera like 240 frames per second and record high-speed film of it and you will immediately see how damaged your motors are even if they don't look like they are or even if they're not behaving like they're damaged with high-speed film you'll see wobbles that you'd never ever thought existed in your motor so we're seeing how long this is gonna fly we got like probably two hours of video today hacking around on the desk and I am gonna clean up the studio a bit inside it's a studio apartment so it's small it's everything but it gives me a lot of money to spend on other stuff and no mortgage, no strata fees that cost as much as rent. So I've been in that game before. And I'm gonna have to attach the receiver properly. But it's performing very well. I trust it. Oh, there goes the receiver. Now we like prop wash. Rock steady. Excellent for proximity. Yeah, on that Dubai stuff, I don't mean to be a harsh guy or anything, but I know that I had some comment. Somebody sent me a message, and I like Ali Shamo. That guy's a really good guy, and he's I think originally from Pakistan, so he's not from Dubai really, but his family's there, and that's important, no matter where they are, you have to go to your family sometimes, sometimes we don't have a choice, sometimes we do, but the issue I have with Dubai is I have friends here in Canada that pretty much escaped to Canada from Dubai, welders that I've taught how to weld, guys I've taught how to do machining, I used to work in a machine shop, so I ran a Haas, CNC machine, a lot of G-code, and water jet as well, making motorcycle dies for gaskets, steel rule die maker. So when I worked in the full-time field and making all that money, I had guys coming in from other countries, and I had a couple of guys come who had worked in Dubai for two years, three years, and they said that they got ripped off so hard about wages and stuff and everything else and they were treated like secondhand citizens. And one of them was beaten, so, you know, by his construction foreman. Uh, had bolts dumped on him from a third floor, things like that. And I, honestly, I can't handle that, and the government knows all about it in Dubai. And in Canada, if somebody did that to an employee, they would probably go to prison, or they at least get fined, and probably put out of business. And. Nowadays, I work in the security industry, and I see a lot of abuse, and it upsets me. So when I see a country like Dubai fooling people that it's some kind of great place for technology, it just, you have to consider the fact that it's freaking illegal to fly in that city. And if you got caught flying, they would probably put you in jail for a while. And if you were a native, or if you were from uh, India or Pakistan working there, or some other third world country, close to third world countries. And India and Pakistan, they have literally slaves in India and Pakistan. People are held in slavery still to this day, as well as Saudi Arabia and other countries. And Dubai is not far off that. Their labor is brought in to do that work. They won't do it themselves as much. I noticed that their drone tech team, I was surprised that they were in the lead. I thought they were students from Dubai. No, they actually hired ringers from outside of the country to represent Dubai and honestly I don't think that no Dubai team wouldn't have gotten a position 
I think that that whole event was up to the whim of whoever thought that they were in power or had the right to rule people. But nobody has the divine right to rule others. It's uh, anti-human and it's, it's not fair. And by going to Dubai and by giving those guys all the tech through their obviously bugged hotel rooms, <laughs> That's a joke, but <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised if they totally take this tech and use it for nefarious things, or at least use the technology that was gleaned from people coming there uh, on the sly so that it, they didn't know that they were being used for technology and knowledge. And what will happen is that you'll see drone racing and everything else get put into other industries and not get the credit. And as far as I know, MultiGP isn't even calling or emailing back from questions. I asked if AMA, nicely I asked if AMA membership was a requirement for taking part in MultiGP, to which they didn't reply. And then I also tried to email NAFPV, which is the North American FPV Association or event. And they don't want to return emails either, it seems. They don't know, they don't have any information on the race there. So that kind of promotion, you know that people are sort of in it for some other reason, maybe. And I don't agree with, uh, you know, I, I, I like the fact Immersion and everything else has done a lot for the hobby, as well as Fat Shark and other companies. And ReadyMade's done a hell of a lot for just flying, as well as guys like Get FPV and that kind of stuff but you know you look at the prices and those guys aren't selling stuff to people that can be taken for money so if I you know TBS is pretty damn expensive stuff and people in Dubai can afford it they can afford that kind of tech and toys but if you were to like talk to somebody an average person they're not gonna buy a TBS unit they're gonna even though they're great they're still a bit too expensive same as the Vortex compared to something that you can build so this quad cost maybe 80 bucks <laughs> total and that's the 3000 ma 10c battery it's probably warm right now maybe as warm as this camera but no it's not and the voltage alarm is set too low so let's go into clean flight and we're gonna do that next I might not videotape that though anyways having a good morning it's my Friday, so I just got off work. <laughs>